my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, after listening to such a moving narration of the death of Jesus, it calls for a deeper meditation about what he means for us, what he stands for us, and how we are responding to all that. The first glaring thing and the most conspicuous in the ceremony of this evening is that Jesus died on the cross. He died for something. He did not die for nothing. He died for the sins of humanity. It's always easy to think about that in a generic sense. But the question is, about me, about you, what are the sins he died for in your life? What are those sins? If you cannot remember any, it might mean you have no share in his death. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Our levels of trans transgression differ, but the fact remains, there must be something about us that he died for. And that is what I really want us to think about. Have a retrospective introspection about this sermon, about the death of Christ. Let it be nothing for me. Remember, he said, I have come to call sinners to repentance, not for the self-righteous. And Gabriel said in the Nativity, in Matthew 121, he will be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So whenever you call that name Jesus, has to remind us of something. Anyone who is able to pronounce that name admittedly says, I am a sinner. You came for me. And we need to situate that in our lives by identifying those things we are not doing good. Those areas we need to improve. That is why we get from this. Secondly, why did Jesus choose the cross? Looking at the meaning and connotation of the cross at that time, the cross was the most miserable way of killing somebody. They gave it to him. He accepted. But what happened? Immediately he grabbed the cross and died on it. The miserable nature of the cross went away. That today, the cross has become a sign of victory. So the death of Jesus brought transformation into the world. He beat the worst and made it the best. And that's the way he wants to transform us into holiness. He picks our sins, forgives them, so that we will be pure. There is always that movement from bad to good in the death of Jesus. We have to see that also in the cross. It has become a sign of victory for everyone, for the church, since the time of constant time, and for all of humanity, even those who did not know. And again, his death on the cross was not for believers only. I want you to think about 
when Jesus died, how many people were true believers? It's possible there were not up to 500. And even those who were after all, ran away and left him. He died alone and forsaken. His death on the cross was for the entire humanity. Both the ones that were not born. So for us today, his death on the cross is not for Christians. It's for every human person in the whole world. So salvation is for everyone. It's not our prerogative. We are only privileged as Christians to acknowledge this victory. So everyone shares in it. And that's why in his death, we also need to pray for every other person in the world on this day that the death of Jesus might bring all of us victory and salvation. And another thing you need to realize is in his dying on the cross, his forgiveness was awesome. That even from that moment, to tell us the efficacy of the cross, to tell us how he can transform misery into victory, he started with the thief on the cross. Somebody who condemned himself said, I deserve this, but this man does not. And he pleaded immediately. And he told everyone, even those who were there jeering at him, making fun of him, that this is for everyone, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He told the young man, this day you will be with me in paradise. He forgave him. So the cross brings forgiveness. And when we talk about the forgiveness of God, it's different from the forgiveness of the human person. When I forgive, I don't forget. No, human beings do not just forget that thing. It remains in our minds. The only thing is that because we are forgiven and before, because we are Christians, when we remember those hurts we suffered, we don't act on them. We don't inflict injury or revenge. If you think back, you remember some things people have done you which you never liked. They are there because your brain is still active. But for God, when God says, I have forgiven you, he does not remember one thing. He forgives and forgets. It's only the devil who tricks us with reminiscence of all those past sins. Things matter we have brought to Jesus at the confessional and we are forgiven. When we want to do something great, the devil reminds you, oh, you are a despicable of sin. God has not forgiven you after all. Who told you? Is not our God. He forgives and forgets. And most times we need to realize that we also need to do something. The thief on the cross did something to win that forgiveness. First of all, he condemned his sins. Have we condemned our sins? Have we repented of them? He cautioned his partner. He, by so doing, that good thing was also teaching us to help others. When you see a bad thing, you have to ask, accept that it's a bad thing. Not because it was done by your child or by your family member, then you can't say again it's a bad thing because you're involved. He said, no, you don't say. And thirdly, he asked and requested for forgiveness. As children of God, we need to know we need to do all that. When you jump without doing all that, to ask for forgiveness, it becomes mechanical because you are going back to it. And that is all about remorse and contrition, which precede confession. And these are the things we need to hold today. So what are those sacrifices we are making? We have to learn to pray.
sometimes the sacrifice we have to make, like maybe I don't like or not like this good thief, could be patient endurance, like Job, across challenging times, believing that my Redeemer needed. It could be faith, like Abraham, who was tested through horrible things, through thick and thin, and he believed that his God would not disappoint him. It could be a call to prayer always, as he called on the apostles in the Garden of Gethsemane. So it could come in different situations, even in the situation we are in to now, where some may think that, oh, God is not with us. We told you. Any time God ceases to be with us, you, you know what happens? The world we go into non-existence. It's not even destruction. Because when you talk about destruction, when you destroy this building, for example, if you come back here tomorrow, you will see the debris. You will see pieces of blocks and wood and stuff like that. But when you annihilate or when you go into non-existence, tomorrow morning you will come here and there will be no sign that something even existed here. That tells you God is still active in the world. Any day he puts away his hand, the world ceases to exist. After all, what is the world except his own? He carries the world in the palm of his hand. So in every situation, our God is still active. He's still alive. He's still following us across difficult and challenging times. You know, there was a story about a young man who was making a very difficult and challenging job. He was to pass a very fearful place. In my place, it used to be a burial ground. Kids are always afraid to pass burial ground in the evenings. So this young man was a past that place. So he prayed to his guardian angel and to Jesus, please, I'm too afraid to pass there. Help me. God sent him an angel just like Tobias. He saw somebody like Raphael walking with him. And when he got to that very place for which he prayed for, that was fearful, he stopped seeing the angel. The angel was not to be saved. In fear, he had to manage, carrying his heart by the hand. And after crossing that place, he started to see the angel again. And he said, oh man, this is crazy. The very place for which I needed you, you left me at that moment. Now I think I can take care of myself. You are of no use to me. You can get away. The angel smiled. He said, All those places you were walking, where well, you were not afraid, I was walking beside you, giving you encouragement. But when you got to that very place that was very fearful, I entered you and possessed you and carried you. You could, that's why you could not see me. The fear you were experiencing was because you are still a human being in human body. And now, after that place, I am now standing by you again. Without me, you would not have made it. But I did not take away your human nature. And these are the type of things we go through in challenging times. Our God is with us now, carrying us by the palms. But the, hum the humanity in us is still active. So let's pray that the death of Jesus in the, on the cross we are commemorating today will bring us the forgiveness of our sins. Draw us much more closer to him in repentance and metanoia. And also, as he died, may we bury our sins with him. And also, may he also take away and bury this monstrous disease and virus threatening our world.